Hello, my name is Rosie Talbot and I'm currently a third year PhD student at Cambridge University working with Deborah Shiajki. So in the next 10 minutes I'm going to talk about the model I've developed for AGN feedback in galaxy scale simulations and some of the work I've just started where we apply this model to galaxy merger scenarios. So I'm going to keep my introduction brief as I expect you all have a very good understanding of this already but I do think it helps to discuss a bit of the motivation behind our model. The galaxy formation is an inherently multi-scale problem and nowhere is this more obvious than when considering AGN jet launching. So while the jet lobes can propagate to kiloparsec scales, they're launched close to the black hole horizon. And this means that in simulations where we want to follow the long-term evolution of the jet, as it interacts with the ISM, the CGM, and even the ICM in cluster scenarios, there'll be many processes that occur on scales below what's resolvable. Due to this multi-scale nature, many different flavors of AGN simulations have developed, each of which is designed to focus on some subset of these vast spatial and temporal scales. And these range from GRMHD simulations, which resolve the accretion and launching scales, to large cosmological box simulations, which can assess the impact of AGN on galaxy population statistics. Looking specifically at the launching mechanism, many of these GRMHD simulations indicate that the blanford nijak process is likely to be at play. Here, a net poloidal magnetic field is evected onto a spinning black hole by the accretion flow. General relativistic frame dragging effects within the ergosphere lead to the development of a toroidal field, and the magnetic pressure in this configuration then launches the jet. And so our work attempts to somewhat bridge these scales by implementing a blanford nijak jet model motivated both by theory and GRMHD simulations into the moving mesh coder repo, allowing us to follow the jet propagation to galaxy scales. And I'm now gonna briefly discuss some of the details of this model. Many black hole accretion models use the spherically symmetric Bondi prescription, but the blanford nijak mechanism requires accurate tracking of the black hole spin. So we can't just ignore the angular momentum of the accreting gas. So we model the black hole as being surrounded by a subgrid thin accretion disk and use known analytic solutions to follow the mass and angular momentum transport through the disk and onto the black hole. This subgrid system is fully embedded in the hydro scheme, which we use to calculate inflow rates onto the alpha disk. And we also allow for the possibility that the disk is misaligned with respect to the black hole spin direction. And in this case, the disk is expected to warp and this imposes a bardeen patterson torque on the black hole and on the disk. And so we take this into account to more accurately model the angular momentum evolution. Altogether, this gives us a closed system of equations that specify the evolution of the black hole and subgrid disk, as well as the launching of the jet. Now, I'm aware that putting these equations up here without a full explanation isn't going to be particularly illustrative of the model. But if anyone is interested, then please do see my recent paper or feel free to drop me an email. I'd be happy to discuss this. Instead, here's what I hope is a more accessible summary of the model. The black hole mass and angular momentum evolved due to accretion and jet launching. The disk mass and angular momentum evolved due to accretion and inflow from the surroundings. And we also include bardeen patterson talks in the angular momentum evolution. In my recent paper, we performed a suite of simulations looking at the central region of a typical seafoot. So a black hole at the center of a circumnuclear disk embedded within a stellar bulge and surrounded by a warm CGM. So we focused on understanding the ways in which these jets interact with the surrounding medium and we also compared the outflows produced by our full spin-driven jet models to those produced by jets with a fixed power and direction. And one interesting finding was that the morphology and evolution of these spin-driven jets are completely different from jets with fixed power and direction. And this was particularly obvious in the case when the jet, so the black hole spin, 
is initially directed straight into the circumnuclear disk. Now, as we can see here, these jets drive turbulent, multi-phase, quasi-bipolar outflows, and they undergo bardeen peterson talking, causing them to emerge from the circumnuclear disk. So in the work I'm just finishing writing up at the moment, we expanded on this and looked at a wider range of initial black hole spin magnitudes, spin directions, as well as different feeding regimes and different pressurizations of the ambient medium. And as we can see from these temperature and density slices, the properties of the jet driven outflow is very dependent on the black hole spin magnitude and direction, as well as the mass inflow rates and the CGM properties. And we also find clear evidence that the power of these jets is regulated by the accretion flow. Here we're looking at some of these simulations at times when the gas can reach the alpha disk. So the slices show the Z component of the specific angular momentum and slices of a tracer that identifies all material that's not in the circumnuclear disk. So we found that before jets are launched, the accretion from the circumnuclear disk is fairly coherent and axisymmetric. The jet initially cuts off inflow from the surroundings, but when it resumes, the inflow is much more bursty. And we can also see that jet-driven backflows play an important role in the feeding process, with vortices funneling circumnuclear disk material towards the black hole. So, in the final few minutes, I'm going to talk about a project I've just started working on, which I'm pretty excited about. We're applying this model to supermassive black holes in galaxy mergers. So, in this work, we're focusing on major mergers of galaxies at around redshift 2. And currently, we're looking at two identical 10 to the 12 solar mass halos with high gas fractions, and I've put some other relevant galaxy parameters up here on this slide. So these simulations will allow us to assess the impact of the merger torques on the jet directions, both before and after the black hole coalesce. And we can also investigate how the presence of alpha disks and jets alter the predictions of black hole growth during a major merger. So we'll also look at how efficient gas fueling impacts the mass accretion rate through the alpha disks and the resulting jet powers. As well as this, we'll investigate how the flow patterns in the vicinity of the black holes depend on the mass ratio, black hole spins, gas fractions, and how these change as a result of jet launching. Ultimately, we aim to provide predictions for the X-ray emission counterpart to the merger. So, to summarise, we've developed a new self-consistent subgrid model for black hole accretion through a warped alpha disk and feedback in the form of a kinetic blanford snijet jet. We verified our model by carrying out idealised simulations of the central regions of a typical CFIT galaxy. And we found that outflow morphologies are highly dependent on the jet power and direction and so self-consistent determination of these quantities is crucial. We're now applying our JET model to merger scenarios, and ultimately, we aim to provide constraints on the link between electromagnetic observations and gravitational wave signals that would be detectable by LISA that would result if these AGN coalesce. Thank you for listening, and of course, please do feel free to email me if you have any questions at all.